this is going to be a major update video it's june of course half of the year is gone my what we don't achieve this year what have we done this year see the way the months are moving but the times are mad <laughs> the times are crazy hey guys welcome back again to my youtube channel <laughs> It is your favorite baby girl, Mama Dinah Ekuweme, in the, in the building. Anyway, today I'm going to be giving you guys major updates, frequently asked questions that I've been getting via DM, Q&As that people kept asking, even when I put up the anniversary Q&A, and just major life updates, what's happening with Japa relocation, am I Japa dying, which is the trend now. <laughs> I remember the year before I moved and the year I moved, it was Japa, Japa, Japa. Now, it's Japa da. <laughs> so, um, am I joining the Japa da trend? Am I going back to Nigeria? What's the update with my scholarship, with my faith? Um, am I Muslim now? Just a whole lot of questions that many people have been asking and asking and asking. And I've been for a while now just avoiding. So sit tight, it's not going to be a long video. I'm going to go straight to the point, I promise. I have some of the questions here so I don't forget you get. Anyway, the first one is, are you now Muslim? <laughs> Simple answer is no. Am I Christian? I don't know. For me, the definition of Christianity is Christ-like. There is no point to you saying you're a Christian and there is no manifestation of the Christianity in you and when I say Christianity is not obviously being hypocritical about it but living talking walking the faith yeah most of you adults can differentiate between hypocrisy and the people who are actually acting Christ like people who are just doing the do just shamelessly being Christians and yeah I don't I don't like to throw away the word Christian I was born Christian. I was born into a Catholic home. My dad Catholic, my mom Catholic. All through my childhood, it was embedded. We went through all, all of it. Everything you know about Catholicism, me and my siblings, we went through it all. Catechism, just mentioned. We even entered block rosary, all of them. We carry standing. <laughs> Those of you who grew up in Naba, you know what I'm talking about. You carry standing to motherless baby's home. We did all those waka, went to people's houses. Anything Catholicism, that's, that's, sincerely, that's all I've known all my life until, um, yeah, teenagehood, when I started knowing myself, not just what I've been taught, when I started applying the things that I've known. Sorry I'm giving you guys this whole gist because a lot of people may be like, so what happened? Why? Why? That's why I'm just backtracking. But yeah, um, teenagehood, a whole lot. A whole lot that I'm not going to go into in this video, but I just know that I a major thing, it, 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 it wasn't just one event. It was a buildup of different events that just made me give up on God, give up on God like totally. Um, if you went to secondary school with me, you would know. Even if, yes, it wasn't a Catholic school, they made provision for Catholic students, you know, the Reverend, I think we used to have mass early more more on Sundays. There was a way they regulated it. And then, um, yeah, you could join. The, the, the major one was the choir, the school choir. The, I was in school choir. Like, I... <laughs> My, I would just say my parents bred me well. My mom, I would say, because she was the one who really inculcated the whole faith and everything into us. Um, my mom was very, very intentional about us growing up, you know, with God in God, no wayward. And I carried that all through, you know, into secondary school. And the whole of my teenagehood, the things just fell apart towards the time I was almost turning an adult. And unfortunately, I drifted away or I drifted apart from God drastically when I moved over to the UK for studies. Like Catholicism in Nigeria and Catholicism in the UK, those of you who live there, different. So the only church I could relate to to some degree, I don't know if it was because of the yearning for a Nigerian community or yeah, I just wasn't feeling the Catholic churches in the UK. 
and I've always known Catholicism in Igbo. I barely can say Catholicism in English, weird. But yeah, I grew up in the East, so it's normal. All the most Catholic churches, unless you want to go specifically for English or Latin Mass, it's Igbo. Everything is Igbo. So I, I could say everything in Igbo. So maybe that was another reason why I just wasn't feeling, you know, yeah, when I was in uni. So I joined Redeem. I was, yeah, I connected. It was easy. Um, all through my BSc, it was Redeem. I was into it, into it, you know, yeah. Came back to Nigeria. I was still attending. In fact, when I came back to Abba, there's a Redeem at Umule. I don't know if it's still existing. At Umule, the only Redeem, the major one you know at Umule at the time. I started going. My siblings were shocked. My mom was shocked. <laughs> you know, everybody was shocked because I really connected with Redeem at the time. When I went to Benin for my training as well, I was going. Yeah, until marriage. Omo, thinking about it now, I've been through faith. <laughs> If there's a if there's a word like that, I don't know if there's anything like that. What's the plural of faith? I've been through different dominations of Christianity. But yeah, um, when I went to Benin, Redeem, I was attending Redeem the whole year. Um, even if Amaka, my friend, tried to, yeah, sometimes I would go with her to, she just tried to persuade me all the time to go with her to Mass. But at that point, I just wasn't, I just loved Redeem. And then marriage happened and my husband agreed that we have to go to Anglican marriage. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. I know people have their own. This is the way we decided to do it for ourselves. We decided to attend Anglican. We wedded in Anglican and I decided, okay, what's the point? I already fell off of Catholicism. Um, my husband wouldn't even hear that redeemed thing. So let me join, since I'm the Ashawa for <laughs> this whole church thing, let me join him and Koku be going to Anglican. For one day, I never, I never felt Anglican. Like, I, that, I think that was where it just yapatad. I just used to go with my husband to church for church sake because every Sunday, yeah, we just have to go to church. I never connected. There was no real connection. Um, maybe when they sing hymns, that I'm particularly familiar with from secondary school, I'll feel like, okay, I achieved something. But other than that, this is me being open and honest, never connected to Anglican, and then Saudi happened. So you see where my faith is. So um, yeah, I'm not actively looking to convert to Islam. I'm just at that point where it's the universe, it's the energy I give. What does all religion preach? Peace, love, do good, treat your neighbor as you treat yourself. And I think that's the principle I'm trying to live by, the energy I'm trying to give. I feel like whatever energy I give into the universe is what I will get. If I get good, fine. If I get bad, it happens, it's life. And that's the vibe I'm currently at. I'm not overly religious at the same time, I'm not an atheist, I'm just, eh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, don't call me Satan, don't call me a queen, don't call me wish. <laughs> don't say, hey, I need to find God, don't say that, don't, impo don't project anything to me. You can preach the gospel, you can preach Islam, like, I'm, I'm very open. It makes me less judgmental, less, you know how, when it comes to politics, maybe you support this party, you know, you, you feel the need to defend to, I'm just watching everybody, watching as the universe is watching all of us. But anyway, yeah, I'm not Muslim. The next question I'll be answering is, what about your scholarships or the scholarships you applied for here in Saudi? So if you didn't know, as of last year and beginning of this year, I started applying to scholarships um, for master's programs here in Saudi, most schools that offer to international students, you know, fully funded scholarships, I was, I was at it, I was at it. But yeah, the news is that unfortunately, 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 mm, I am the rejected lamb. <laughs> All the schools I applied to, and this is not funny, when I was receiving the unfortunately, it was, it was hitting me my chest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all the schools, all the schools, all the schools said, nah, 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 uh, try again sometime soon. No reason, they just said, unfortunately, you're unable to make it. But I know the gap here, 
um, when I was filling in some of the universities, they were asking for, you know, what research have you done so far? It's competitive. It's highly competitive. Most of the universities here are top. When I say top, world ranking top, Middle East top. So, uh, you know what you need to have here for you to <laughs> enter. You, you just cannot give six years, seven years gap here and say you want to choke your head. You, <laughs> you know, Chris, <laughs> where you have people who are, you know, actively, you know, with experience, with research papers, with blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, yeah, your girl was rejected. All unis rejected me. But I, there's no harm in trying again later. There is no harm. Next year, we go again. We try again. Um, but before I try again, what I'm trying to do now is maybe by January, I can start a few courses, depending on how I'm going with the kids and homeschooling, either September or January, I can look into, you know, doing some courses. Now I have time. Now my kids are affording me the time, you know. So yeah, that's the plan, but I'm not, I'm not giving up. I am not giving up. I, I'm just not giving up. This next question, everybody has been on my head. Everybody has been on my head. Dina, you guys should get a car, get a new car, blah, 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 for the kids. All this uh, taxi, taxi business, using stroller. Sincerely, first of, first of, if we're going to get a car here, it has to be my husband who is desperate for that car to be gotten. I mean, before I came here, I was desperate for it because I was driving in Nigeria. So going from driving to walking, I couldn't comprehend. I was like, no, 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 babe, you need, to, you need to get us a car. He actually got his driver's license before we came. And then we came, something came up that last year. <laughs> and then the car was just out of the picture and we just got used to the stroller thing doing whatever we want to do now two proximity literally town is literally not miles away it's like 10 12 minutes drive from where we live hospital where he works is like five minutes six minutes walk um everything is close by everything is convenient like the park we go to everything is just so if we get the car now, we'll be maintaining it, the cost, everything, then we're not staying here permanently, I believe. I believe it's just a temporary stay. Um, yeah, the, the thought of buying at a high price and selling at a low price or uh, maintenance cost proximity. Those are the things I weighed. I was like, let me stop putting pressure. For the kids, we're mostly indoors. Okay, let's say we get the car. Where and where are we going to? When out of how many times in a month, we're mostly indoors. At least in Nigeria, some that was going to school. I was going to supermarket to buy stuff, market. Everything was far apart. So there's no way you wouldn't need a car. But here, like, I've gotten to the point where I'm like, I'm even scared of driving with the things I'm seeing. I'll even be inside boat and be shouting, Jesus, Jesus. I rarely see people use indicator lights here. I mean, in this village, when we went to Riyadh, people were more civilized with driving. And this is my personal opinion. I don't know. If you live in Saudi, let me know if this is what you've noticed as well. In this particular village, I know they see indicator lights. So we just brr, bomb. Accidents could easily happen. Like the way people drive here is mad. People do drifting. Have you heard of drifting? I know some of you have heard, but youngies here, they, they do drift. The way people drive here, I don't know how to comprehend it. It's, it can be crazy. It can really be crazy and mad. If you're a woman, you need to be... If you think that you drove in Nigeria, you drove in the maddest place, whether it's Lagos or Abba, come and try this Saudi village. You go see... This one, they don't, they don't even honk or do pee pee pee. What you just be driving, you just... Bah, bah. <laughs> and the day is when I say, okay, let me say we have a car, we get a car with my quake quake hand. Where I'm always being over careful, and this happens. Gonna come get caught on my mother. What will I tell my mother? What will I tell them? That gulusibo. What will I tell them? So, yeah, I. I <laughs> 
that's one of the major factors as well that I'm just like, you know what, let's be managing the boat. Because the boat people, it's not called boat here, it's called Kayan. But my husband said they use boat as well here in Saudi. But in this village, I mostly use Kayan. The Kayan people, they already know the Chris. Even them too, where they drive, get their Chris. So Chris can handle Chris. They already know. So uh, there's nothing to be scared of when it comes to them. Me, who is an outsider, even if I, even if they are the ones that jam me, how do I start speaking mafi, 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 mushkila? You hit me, I hit you, I, I, I cannot, you go jail, I, I, you repair. By the time I finish speaking my nonsense Arabic, <laughs> let me go repair my car, repair that person's car. So, yeah. Another major question, in fact, my email every week. So if you feel like I've not responded to you, this is the reason why. Every week, there's no single week I don't get somebody sending, please, how do I get a job? Please, can you get a job? Please, I need a job. Oh, I'm a Nigerian doctor. I'm in Nigeria. I want to relocate my family. I, I think I've mentioned this several times last year. I don't have any plug to getting a job here. I don't even work. So how do you want me to get the, where do you want me to get the plug from? My husband came here before I did. The agent he even used to come here doesn't operate again. As of the time, he was even recommending to people. The man wasn't functional. He wasn't doing this whole Saudi thing again. So the only thing I can give you plug to, if you need visa plug, like you need sharp, sharp visa within a week, I can give you because, yeah, that's the one I actually went through with my kids. You know, I went to Abuja. I saw the guy. I did everything. That's the one I'm sure of. But any other thing, I'm so sorry. I cannot help you get a job here. I, like, I cannot promise something I don't have. No, so med lab scientist or doctor, so I, I, I don't even work. I'm a dependent. Dependents here do not work. So I don't even hear. The only thing entering my ear is, how do I care for these children? How do I run the house? <laughs> Talking to me about job, I'm clueless. I'm clueless. So please, 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 even at this point, here in this village, they are barely, barely at this point, I don't know why, they are barely taking in Nigerians. And even if they are, if there's an agent taking in Nigerians here, I don't know. We don't even know about them. So, yeah. Why are your kids not in school? Are there no schools where you are? Why are you homeschooling? The kids need to go to school. Your kids are not learning. Blah, 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 blah. First off, there's something called homeschooling. For those of you who haven't heard of homeschooling or who are not familiar with the word homeschooling, it's basically what those teachers do at school, we do it at home and even more. But we're not strict with it. It's more balanced. It's not structured. It's not this, this time, this, that. We can today do addition. Tomorrow we can do subtraction. Next tomorrow we can, we make it fun. We make it interactive and we make it in a way that the kids learn. You know, it's fun for them to learn. It's like playtime, but they actually learn. So it's been working well for us. Um, I've done a video in the past where I went school hunting here. There are no English schools in this village where we are. They're all Arabic schools and just one international school. And the fees, although decent, calculating a whole lot of things, is a lot for kids. You you're not putting one child, you're putting three, right? You're putting three children. As an international, if you calculate it, <laughs> I don't want to say, just check it out for yourself. Another question that I keep getting is, will you be relocating to Australia? Uh, I think there is a live video where I was talking about relocation and I mentioned New Zealand being one of the options that I have personally for, you know, the only Western economy or the only Western country that is entering my eye that I'm actually interested in. But to enter is where the cocoa day. So um, Australia, Australia is not bad. It could be a means to an end. You know, you enter Australia, from there you go to New Zealand. But I don't want, I'm tired of moving. If I'm living here, let it be, you know, let it just be the final place where we know the kids are stable, we're stable, we're working towards, you know, whatever plans we have as a family. Um, yeah. So Australia, 
I used to consider, but now I, I don't know. At the end of the day, it all depends on my husband. He has the countries, like I mentioned, that he's, in fact, not countries, he has a country that he specifically wants to go to. Um, and I have countries that I feel he should be looking into. It's still a, <laughs> should we, should we not? Should we try, should we calculating finances, a whole lot of factors. Like you know, the world right now, is different from the world you've known <laughs> in the past five years and 10 years. So any move from here just has to make sense. If not, I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing as a family? But yeah, I do not know for now. For now, if there's any updates, I'll update you guys. Traveling to Nigeria anytime soon. So not just traveling to Nigeria, let's just call it Jakbada. Am I moving back to Nigeria? <sighs> That question depends on my son's, not just my son, because believe it or not, my mama and Yabo, they are catching up with some Jachi. Uh, my mama will be four by January next year, so she's no longer a baby like that. She'll be of school age by January, so anything we're thinking of now should be... <laughs> we need to think fast, you get. So, the only reason why we will be going to Nigeria is for these kids to pick up socially like for them to start talking for them to socialize with other kids for them to because yes here we're trying our best as dependents you know moms with kids but let's just be honest everybody is trying to get their kids to socialize and um to speak to do all that it means that it's not even perfect here but if you find an enabling environment where you know most of the kids of their age range are speaking everybody is rapping there's that social interaction it quickens the process my friend nana last year she traveled to nigeria before she traveled her son used to be very quiet like just observant and all that week that they came back the changes even that my son is now picking up is just what her son, you know, impacted on my son. Like, the little my son can do now and say and, you know, everything is from what Nana's son learned in Nigeria. They only stayed two months, but it made a huge difference. This boy came back, was speaking, was rapping, was just talking, being all talkative. I want that. I mean, I came before Nana, but, you know, Nana has gone and, you know, yeah. So if by next month, my son is still where he's at, we will be considering moving back to Nigeria. So, yeah, that's, I, I actually talked about this before. So definitely, definitely, definitely getting a nanny. Mm, I need help, oh. I know last year I was like, oh, I don't need that, I can do it, super mama, a strong woman. I need help. I went through the worst last year with childcare, navigating it, just understanding what's going on, how I can do all this repetitively, monotonously, every single day. As the days go by, burnt out sessions come and go, because there are some days that I'm just like, I'm just going, I'm moving, but I don't know if a human being or even a wood, they move. I'm just going with it because I'm seriously burnt out. So yeah, definitely. I don't care what age my kids are. I need help. So if there is a way to get a nanny, I will definitely get a nanny. But yeah, I still am considering if my mom retires next year, you know, next year, December, if she can come and visit. My mom-in-law, she has a business, so to drag her to Saudi or to beg her to come and stay even two months, ah, in Nigeria, to even tell her to call for Mungo. Two weeks, she don't, they say, ah, <laughs> it's time to go back to my business, so I don't know, I don't know. My mom-in-law, if I try to convince her to come, if she can't, then I'll just wait for my mom to retire officially and then she can stay as long as she can to help with the kids um yeah what do you eat now since you don't have a gall bladder if you didn't know i had a gall bladder removal surgery where they just uprooted the gall stones and the gall bladder because yeah it was chronic it was painful it was infectious but yeah what do i eat now 
I eat less greasy food because that's what they really advised. Avoid oily food, fatty foods, omo pizza, omo burger, omo chopo chopo, which is so difficult to avoid because let me just face facts. I, I used to look at people, I used to think of people who used to say, I stress eat. I eat when I'm stressed. I said, mm, is that a chronic disorder? Is that a problem? Are you, are you all right? Are you okay? I didn't think, like, you know when you're in Nigeria, when people mention certain things, you could just they say, as in, it's like people don't have problems. You just invent problems for yourself. <laughs> so when I came here, I didn't realize I was stress eating until this gallbladder thing. Because, yeah, even when I, when I used to go to gym and all of that, days I'm so stressed. 12 a.m., 1 a.m., or other food I'll be eating. And I used to think it's normal because, oh, I'm just eating now. I'm, I'm binging on movie. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's not normal. I realized that I was actually stress eating. Sometimes I won't eat the whole day because I'm busy. Then at night, I'll just order pizza or order burger or other. All those things are compounding. They are compounding. And even if since I did the surgery, I haven't, it's so difficult. Yes, it's reduced from what it used to be but <sighs> yeah i try to eat rice meat fish just i don't have much option now than fruit and veg and starchy foods really and you guys know how nigerian diet is if it's not fry fry it is starchy starchy so i'm 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 just curious like what would one year from now look like? Would I even add more weight than I did? Or I don't know, if you have, if you're in this situation, how are you maintaining your weight? How are you avoiding, you know, stress eating? How are you, what are you eating? My husband bought me an air fryer oven, which has made life better. I barely fry now. My fish, my chicken, everything goes in there. Even potatoes, I don't use oil anymore. When I do potato wedges or any sort of fries or chips, I just put it into the air fryer. And yeah, although it's not tasting the way I like it, I mean for the potato one, every other thing has been actually good. It's been an upgrade actually. But yeah, let's see how the next one year would look like. Um, I believe it's, it's going to take a while to drop certain habits. I'm working on them. I'm not there yet. It's not going to happen overnight, but I'm, now conscious i'm more conscious now than before about what i put in my body what i put inside my mouth and yeah consider getting a job in saudi if we're still here until yagazie is five then i'll have to get a job at my husband's hospital i, I don't care even if now pharmacy job reading labels give me work because yeah if my last baby is five what am i doing at home what excuse do i have so um, yeah, if yeah, we're still here until Yabo is five, he's two, he's going to be two next month. If we're still here by the time he's five, that's three years from now, I will, it's not I will, I must have to get a job at this hospital or any other hospital here in Gurayat. The last but not the least um, question that most people have been asking is my pod cast i started a podcast before this whole higi haga of gallbladder happened and yeah i had videos that i had made collaboration sit down videos all of that i will post the ones that i feel like okay it's good to post the ones that are no more relevant i'm just going to not post them but the ones that are still relevant that are forever going to be relevant I will definitely post but um yeah i'm gonna go back to maybe anytime from this month next week in two weeks time three weeks anytime this month um expect that we're going to go back to the talk to me nice podcast um hopefully you get to support if you're still interested in collaboration or whatsoever you know with the podcast leave me an email my email will be in the description area below but yeah that's 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 the major update for everything if i've missed anything out still ask me in the comment section below anyway guys i didn't want to bore you guys with a long ass video but hopefully you know what's popping right now yeah you know what's, po what's, what's popping <laughs> anyway guys do make sure to give this video a massive thumbs up subscribe down below and hopefully i am going to see you guys in my next video for now 